They never had the power to prohibit, but they soon gave themselves the power to tax. The, uh, the, law, the laws which outlawed marijuana were not prohibitive criminal statutes. They were tax acts, the 1937 Marijuana Tax Act where uh, an ounce of marijuana was taxed, taxed at $200, or it was selling on streets for a dollar. At that time, congressmen voting uh, on this piece of legislation were not aware that marijuana was hemp, cannabis hemp, that that country had been using profitably for centuries. The hemp prohibition was initiated by American petrochemical companies in the 1930s to destroy the economic potential of hemp. It has nothing to do with the chemical effects of cannabis drugs or their perceived danger. It's a blatant case of industrial espionage to remove competition from evolving petrochemical substitutes for superior natural fibres. This was why the prohibition was brought in in 1938 and this is why the prohibition is maintained. Despite hemp being a major fibre crop in America and the world last century, mention of hemp has been erased from museums and textbooks this display on the history of American textiles in Washington's Smithsonian Institute contains no mention of hemp. When asked why, museum curator Arkado replied, children don't need to know about hemp anymore, it confuses them. Similarly, in the National Textile Museum, there is no mention of hemp, either on display or in the library catalogue. Another example of the hemp cover-up was the attempted destruction of all traces of the US Department of Agriculture's film, Hemp for Victory. This film, made in 1942, was used to encourage patriotic US farmers to grow hemp for the war effort. After 45 years of burial in government archives, it was rediscovered in 1989 by hemp activists. In 1942, 14,000 acres of fiber hemp were harvested in the United States. The goal for 1943 is 300,000 acres. Thus, hemp, cannabis sativa, the old standby cordage fiber is staging a strong comeback. American hemp will go on duty again. Hemp for mooring ships. Hemp for tow lines. Hemp for tackle and gear. Hemp for countless naval uses, both on ship and shore. Hemp for victory. Straight after the war, however, the government once again abolished the hemp industry and eventually criminalised the plant. A hundred years ago, the farmer produced all of the fibre, all of the medicine, all of the fuel, and all of the food that the society consumed. That's what farming is, is you raise those four basic categories, fibre, food, medicine, and fuel, and you sell them in the cities. They're the basic necessities of life. The money flows out of the cities back to the landowner and to the producer, where land is the means of production of wealth. It's been that way for thousands of years. Today, a hundred years later, the farmer doesn't produce any fiber. If they do, it's cotton, which accounts for 50% of the pesticides and herbicides used in the agricultural sector. The farmer doesn't raise any medicine. It's all been monopolized by the pharmaceutical companies. The farmer doesn't raise any fuel. It's all been monopolized by the petrochemical companies. And if you go into a grocery store and look at the ingredients on package, you'll find out how rapidly the farmers being displaced from their heritage of food production. It's all been taken over by the synthetic manufacturers who, in producing these synthetic products, create the toxic waste and the hazardous byproducts with which we're having such a tough time dealing. And not only that, it concentrates wealth in the hands of fewer and fewer people all the time because the means of production of wealth is no longer the land. It is now the factories and the shareholders and the people who own the, uh, the controlling interest uh, in those corporations. government have the right to tell man or woman that they cannot plant a seed in God's green earth and consume the green natural plant that comes up out of it. 
Uh, that seems such an inalienable right. That seems such a, a natural and basic way of communing with Mother Earth and with the natural cycle of things. It really is only a matter of time before hemp returns to Australian industry and commerce. A lot of preliminary work has been done. Uh, we have literally thousands of hectares ready uh, to be turned over to hemp cultivation. Uh, factories to handle the downstream processing of the fibres are ready and waiting. Uh, the industry can develop very quickly once these foolish bureaucratic limitations are removed. It is just such a simple and benign solution and if we don't do it I think um, we're going to lose just about everything that that we hold dear. Hemp could be and will be the, the greatest economic engine that we have seen probably in the history of the human race. It's the dawn of the natural cycle, and it's here to stay.